So hi, Microbe Hunter here. Well, these are dividing ciliates and uh, it's not so easy to find them in a water sample because many of them do not want to divide when you get the water sample directly out of the pond or the river. The reason is, is that uh, there is simply not enough food in the original water sample for them to actually grow and to divide. In this video, I want to show you what you can do to actually promote the growth of ciliates in such a way that it will be much easier for you to actually find dividing cells under the microscope. So I'll be showing you a little tutorial today on what you can do to increase this possibility. So it's going to be another interesting fun little project. Well, what you have to do is, is you have to feed the water sample. Well, not the water sample, the ciliates in the water sample. And there are various food sources that, can, that you can use. So I've used, uh, for example, milk. That's the one that I'm adding right now. Also milk uh, powder, for example. Yogurt is a possibility. Oats, even a crushed wheat grain, or maybe even yeast can be used. And uh, what I've done here is, is I simply added a small amount of the food uh, to a, a water sample. In this case, it's a tap water um, and then later on you have to inoculate it uh, with uh, the pond water so that the ciliates are actually going to be able to grow then. Now why did I use tap water? Uh, because I have to admit I ran out of my pond water sample so what I would suggest that you do is, is that you add the food directly to the pond water. It's really important that you do not add too much food. Don't overfeed it. That is really important otherwise bacteria are going to uh, grow so rapidly that they are going to take away the oxygen in the water sample. So I've also added a few algae um, and they are quite important and good is because they do photosynthesis and this way they also provide more oxygen. And then you have to be patient for about two or three days uh, because this is uh, how much time it takes for the ciliates and other microorganisms to actually start growing in the water sample. Um, but I would not wait much longer and the reason is, is that uh, otherwise uh, the cells will start uh, to die off again. Yeah, so I've, uh, I'm adding a, a whole bunch of water, um, yeah, a water sample to uh, my food uh, source and the tap water. And after a few days, it might actually appear that there is some precipitate forming or that some clots or clumps are forming. It's actually quite good. It shows that something is uh, going on here. Yeah, and so this means that uh, you can experiment around and also um, do take a sample not only once, but every few days. The reason is, is that you might be actually able to see a progression of different microorganisms. So new microorganisms are going to appear, others are going to disappear, and of course it's going to be much easier for you to find the dividing cells. Well now I've simply added uh, four water samples on one microscope slide. I have to admit that's a little bit crowded. I did run out of space. I would not recommend that you do that. But one thing that you notice is I did not add only pure water, but a little bit of some algae or um, some slimy material, some precipitate, because this is the place uh, where most of the ciliates and other microorganisms are actually growing. Well, and that's what you get. Yeah? A very high density um, of, of, of uh, paramecia in this case. Um, it, what are you, what you going to get? Well, it depends a little bit on your original water sample, what cells and what microorganisms were present in the first place. And then it basically means, uh, yeah, we have to go hunt for some cells that divide. And you might see something like this. And you might say, wow, it's dividing. It's not dividing, it's conjugating. Because that's uh, what happens when two cells two separate cells will fuse together with each other to exchange DNA. So they will separate again, uh, but actually right now they are not dividing. And this is a paramecium that actually is dividing and you can see that um, it uh, divides transversely. So this means that uh, when conjugation happens, they line up in parallel and in cell division, they divide transversely. And the two daughter cells that form are also smaller than the original cell. So that's another way how you can distinguish um, conjugation from division. And the third way how you can distinguish that is is if you see that a cell starts to divide like this, follow it around um, and uh, then you're going to see that there are two smaller cells forming and then you can actually be pretty sure that the cell was dividing and not uh, conjugating. Yeah, look at the cells in the right in the center. You might be able to see that, yeah, and now it's separated. Did you see that? Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to see the dividing cells when there's so much chaos going on. And here, this paramecium as well is now starting to divide and after a few minutes, less than 10 minutes, um, they're only connected 
connected uh, barely over their cilia and then the two will separate and then you have two yeah two individual cells so it's uh, quite fascinating uh, to to see this uh, there are actually because um, it's still not uh, so common to see the dividing cells and the reason is is because the actual division process is quite uh, uh, quite fast it only takes a few minutes so most of the video clips that I'm showing you right now um, the division process did not take longer than about uh, 10 minutes yeah, and so and here as well they are now separated so here yet another species still connected they're moving around it might be a little bit difficult sometimes to follow them around under the microscope because they're immediately moving away again um yeah and now it divided as well yeah so this is basically uh, all i wanted to show you today i hope it was interesting for you um yeah experiment around a little bit uh, do share your successes and, fa and failures in the comments section um i would like to also invite you to visit my other my second youtube channel where i'm going to answer questions that are microscopy related i will receive a lot of questions and i'm helping uh, people out uh, with a whole bunch of uh, yeah, microscopy related uh, problems that they have i would like to thank all of my patreon supporters uh, for making this possible and of course as always happy micro hunting as always and see you around next time bye bye